In the previous lecture, we saw a case of an equilibrium between hawks and doves, and we also saw a case of an equilibrium between males and females. So there are a couple of technical terms for these sorts of equilibriums when we're looking at game theory situations. So a Nash equilibrium, so named after this guy Nash, is an equilibrium where each player has no advantage to changing their strategy, assuming everyone else remains the same. And so, of course, this equilibrium depends on the choices and payoffs present. So this is a group of individuals with strategies. No individual has an advantage to changing their strategy in that population. This is a little bit different from an evolutionary stable strategy, which exists when a population as a whole has a strategy at an equilibrium and can't be invaded by a new initially rare strategy. So for example, migrants coming from somewhere else with a different behavior, or mutants, individuals that have genetic mutations that would cause them to play a different strategy. When a population has an ESS, it's resistant to invasion by these changes, so that will cause it to stay pretty much the same. Often these are essentially the same, but you can think about this more as being an equilibrium based on individual strategies, and this being an equilibrium based on a set of strategies used by a group being played at different frequencies. So we saw the sex ratio is an ESS. However, the hawk dove is not an ESS, because when you have a population of all doves, it can be invaded by a single hawk. When you have a population of all hawks, it can be invaded by a single dove. So usually these are the same. Under some circumstances, these are not the same. But what about a mixed strategy, right? So when we were thinking about this, we were thinking about individuals either do hawk or dove, and they're kind of hawks or doves, or sex ratio, individuals are either males or females. What about cases where strategies can be mixed? So if we go back to our hawk-dove example, right, the equilibrium frequency in this population was 58.3%. So that was kind of what we expect to happen to the population. 58.3% would be hawks. The 41.7% would be doves. Being a hawk is just as fit as being a dove, so you'd maintain a population there. What if you had a mixed strategy? Some individual will call them hawk dove, where they'll sometimes play like a hawk, and sometimes they'll play like a dove. And with what frequency will they do these plays? Well, let's have them play at 58.3%. So this is an individual that has flexibility in its behavior, where 58.3% of the time it will act like a hawk, 41.7% of the time it will act like a dove. So if that individual comes into this population, how will they do? Okay, so what happens if they go to a population where everybody is a hawk? Well, 58.3% of the time they'll have that negative result, but 41.7% of the time they'll have this zero result. 58.3% here, 41.7% here. Their overall will be negative 14.575, but remember, in a population of all hawks, the average hawk has negative 25, so this strategy does better. What if that mixed strategy goes to a population of all doves? Well, 58.3% of the time, they'll get this payoff. 41.7% of the time, they'll get this payoff. So their average mean payoff would be 35.4 in a population of all doves. That's here. That's better than the doves are doing. So this mixed strategy would actually do better it could invade either population. A population of all doves or a population of all hawks can be invaded by this mixed strategy and they do better. So you can imagine that if you had a population that was all hawks or all doves, a mixed strategy would actually be able to invade and do better, which is part of why that's not really an ESS. So we can see that there are two possible equilibria that we may get. We may get a polymorphism of pure strategies, in this case, a population where some individuals are hawks, some individuals are doves, they're at a certain frequency, so you have a polymorphism of pure strategies. Or you could have the fixation of a mixed strategy, an invasion of an individual that sometimes is a hawk, sometimes is a dove, they could actually invade a population. And then you might get a population where everybody, 58.3% of the time, acts like a hawk, 41.7% of the time acts like a dove. So do we see these sorts of things in nature? Here's an example of a polymorphism of pure strategies. So this is a species of lizard. They have three different color morphs that match up with three different types of behaviors. A lot of this information is taken from the website of Barry Snervo, who's a professor at UC Santa Cruz. The orange males, these guys, they maintain territories, like we saw earlier in the course. The blue individuals, these guys, they're monogamous mate garters. So they pair up with a female and kind of 
follow her around and spend a lot of time with her. And then these yellow males adopt a sneaker strategy where they'll sneak into a territory maintained by one of these guys. So these strategies have their strengths and weaknesses. So yellows can, because they kind of look like females, can exploit and kind of beat these guys' strategy. However, if they try to sneak in to mate with a female that's a part with one of these, because they're mate guarders and they're paying very close attention to their female, they are able to prevent these guys from being successful. On the other hand, because these guys are big and strong, they're bigger and stronger than these guys, they can actually fight them and beat them up and then basically claim those females. But then of course these guys are weak to these. So it's actually kind of like rock, paper, scissors, right? These guys can beat these guys, these guys beat these guys, and these guys beat these guys. So there are three different strategies, kind of in a rock, paper, scissors sort of arrangement. So what do we actually see in nature? This is an abstract from a scientific paper. So an abstract is a summary of the results of a scientific paper. And you can read all this, but the, the key thing here is that the frequency of the morphs um, oscillate over a time period. So what happens is when orange becomes common, then you see these guys are favored and then they become common the next year or next season. And then when they become really common, then these guys are favored and they become more common because that strategy is favored. And then when that, when that strategy is very common, now this strategy is favored. So you actually have cycling over time where which strategy is optimum oscillates over a period of about four or five years. You never actually achieve a state where there's one winning strategy that's better than the other two because how they do depends on the frequency of the other two. So in this system, individuals don't change their individual strategies, but you end up with a polymorphism of these three pure strategies. But in this case, the frequencies change over time, which is different from our hawk dove example. And it's because we have a little bit more complexity with three strategies. Or we could have a fixation of a mixed strategy. So there is a phenomenon in biology called phenotypic plasticity. Phenotypic plasticity is where you can get different phenotypes arising from the same genotype and widely different phenotypes from the same genotype. So for example, in a number of frog species, uh, we can see there are two different morphs. There are regular and extra large cannibals. So these are actually basically siblings here. They're genetically essentially the same, but environmental cues will actually cause some of these tadpoles to grow very, very big and start eating the other tadpoles in their group of eggs that have hatched out of the group of eggs. And which morph they will develop into depends on the amount of food. If there's not a lot of food, then you'll see more of these guys developing to giant cannibals and eating their siblings. If there's plenty of food, then you'll see more individuals staying and developing more slowly. So the same genes, these are not genetic differences between big tadpoles and small, these are different phenotypes arriving from phenotypic plasticity, and you can also think about them as two different strategies, right? The strategy to grow really fast and be a cannibal, or a strategy to grow more slowly and not be a cannibal. In Daphnia, little aquatic organisms, they have the same sort of phenotypic plasticity. If there are predators in the environment, they develop and develop the following body where there's a spine on each end. If there are no predators, they develop a little differently where they still have a little bit of spine here, but they don't have the big one on their head. So this takes less energy to grow a body like this, right? Less energy devoted to those spines means more energy to reproduction in the future. But if there's predation, growing these spines leads to higher fitness in terms of surviving against predators. So the strategy for not growing a spine or growing a spine depends on the environment. The strategy that is chosen is one that is appropriate for the environment. So we can use our game theory reasoning to understand things like why sometimes tadpoles become much larger, why sometimes Daphnia have spikes, and sometimes they don't.